The actual motor choice for the Synapse should provide at least a one-to-one -one thrust ratio for good, reliable launches. Less than that will certainly fly, but it's a little bit more challenging to launch. I'm having great success with these NTM prop drive Turnigy motors, 3536. This is a 1400 kV, which is great with a 10 by 5 prop here and good for hand launching where ground clearance isn't quite as critical. Also in an 1800 kV is good for a narrower diameter prop where ground clearance is needed if you're using landing gear. That'll give a nice uh, clearance of the propeller. But just about any motor that gives 250 or better watts, greater than 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio, and about a 1,000 to 2,000 kV range is pretty good choice. But so far my favorite has turned out to be the Turnigy Prop Drive 3536. Your choice of motor mount and the installation technique depends partly on whether your motor has the shaft protruding from the can side of the motor or through the base side of the motor. For this type of motor, it will have to be mounted with the shaft through the motor mount like this, which has some mounting implications on the fuselage. For this type of motor where the shaft is attached to the can of the motor itself, it's applied here. This is probably simpler, but as it places the propeller further away from the motor mount, any vibration can tend to be amplified through vibration and flexibility in the motor mount. So take that into consideration. In this mounting technique, the entire mass of the motor and the propeller is placed on one side of the motor mount. Therefore, any vibration can be amp amplified. And if the RPMs reach a certain resonant frequency, as this system has, just like a tuning fork, that vibration can become quite bad. However, a properly balanced propeller and motor, this works quite well, and the clearance it provides from the fuselage and wing is quite nice. In this type of motor mount where the shaft is placed through the motor mount, the mass of the propeller and the mass of the motor are balanced more or less over the mounting point. That tends to compensate some for any vibration and resonance, but the clearance is less ideal. While this shaft configuration is ideal for balance, it does present some challenges for mounting your propeller and attaching the motor to the motor mount itself. One option is, of course, to use a through hole with your motor mount and just place the shaft through that, mount it accordingly on the plane, and put the propeller on the shaft. Another option is to buy one of these accessory kits which allow you to attach the propeller to the opposite side of the motor like this with the extra shaft protruding and can be cut off taking care to protect all of these holes with tape and plastic to avoid contaminating the magnets inside with the shavings or just leave the shaft on. And a third option is to either buy a separate shaft or remove this shaft and mill into it the landing spot for the set screw and also groove out for the E-clip. This just requires a drill and a dremel and a little bit of finesse and technique, but it can be done, and the shaft can be placed in the motor in this opposite configuration so that the propeller can be mounted on this side. I like to build up the motor mount area with alternating plastic gift cards and depapered foam board so that provides a nice, firm, stiff platform to apply the motor mount. It has reasonably good stiffness in all directions as well as having the edges of the gift cards exposed to accept the thrust of the motor mount against the fuselage. For all of my planes I prefer some variation of this L-shaped motor mount. This was made out of scrap titanium but thin steel or aluminum will work just fine. Anything that's relatively strong and resilient and can be drilled and cut will work. Here's a different variation which actually wraps over the top of the fuselage and engages the top for additional stiffness and security. Probably the most straightforward version of this is to stick the motor mount base leg here onto the underside inside the fuselage. This can be bolstered by applying an additional piece of metal across the top and drilling right through that, screwing through both pieces of metal into the motor. Here's another example of the L-shaped motor mount which is adhered to the inside lower surface of the fuselage with an additional L-shaped piece over the top. This just has tape over it and a zip tie has actually been placed over the upper one and around the lower one to sandwich those together 
for a nice stiff uh, motor mount. Using a variation of that L-shaped motor mount where it L's up and then has additional tongues that protrude forward, it can accomplish a one-piece motor mount with a sandwich effect like this one. Here the motor is partly recessed into the fuselage. Screws have been placed through and through the fuselage. Here's an example of the most straightforward use of the L-shaped motor mount, simply stuck right on the top of the... This is good for motors like this NTM prop drive series, where the shaft actually protrudes through the base of the motor where the wires are, and so that the shaft must pass through the motor mount like this. This doesn't provide very good clearance of the prop, and it's also not as aerodynamic. The full face of the motor is exposed to the airflow. So good for cooling, but bad for aerodynamics. However, this is the most simple way to apply a motor where the shaft goes through the motor mount. Whatever motor mounting technique you choose, I do recommend a small degree of down thrust, about three degrees in this case, and the higher the motor is mounted, the greater the degree of down thrust may be needed to compensate for any diving tendencies, especially on launch. If you launch this plane at low airspeed and high throttle, when the plane leaves your hand, it will tend to pitch downward. Building in a little down thrust will tend to keep the plane level or slightly pitched up when power is applied, especially on takeoff. This is very useful with the synapse.